Hello, peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum. This video is called Why I Converted to Islam. I accepted Islam because I want to be saved from hell. I want to be in eternal paradise forever with God Almighty. I was born and raised as a Christian. Throughout my years as a Christian, I never knew much about Islam. However, I probably knew more than the average person does. There came a point in my life when I could no longer believe in Christianity. I studied, investigated, and prayed to God about the doctrines of Christianity, but I found my soul, my body, and my mind opposed to them. In a nutshell, I left Christianity for theological reasons, as you will see in my upcoming video called, Why I Left Christianity. I never once thought I would become a Muslim. I was still too deeply influenced by my Judeo-Christian background, and I considered Islam to be a foreign and violent religion. I still worshipped God and called Him Father, but the doctrines of Christianity made it impossible for me to still consider myself as a Christian. However, my heart remained strongly attached and connected with Jesus Christ. I needed direction and spiritual guidance, so I prayed to God for that. I was attracted to Judaism, but when I realized it did not believe in Jesus, I immediately turned away from it. So now I was a believer in God without a religion, but I wanted to follow a religion that was from God. I logically said to myself, I know there is only one true God, so there must also be one true religion. However, I would not accept any faith that rejects Jesus Christ. I continued looking for a new way of life and new identity outside of Christianity. I searched the world's religions to see which religions made it an obligation to believe in Jesus Christ. There were a few religions that believed in Jesus, but only one made it an obligation, which was Islam. Thus, I started critically investigating Islam. When I first picked up the Quran, I was excited. I used to read it every day at work, whenever I had the chance. As I was reading it, I felt very much welcomed by its message. And the thought of Islam being a foreign and violent religion was quickly removed when the pages of the Quran repeatedly spoke of Mary and Jesus, Noah, Abraham, and Moses, and other prophets that I was familiar with. I felt like I was coming home again. I was very much impressed by Allah's, God's attributes and qualities too. No longer did I think of him as the terrible Islamic God. Allah was speaking to me about love, charity, peace, forgiveness, and many other noble concepts. The Quran gave me a true sense of God's greatness. It taught me that there is only one God who is unique, who is creator of all, who is transcendent, and we should worship him alone without equals or partners. This reinforced my Judeo-Christian background and cleared up the remaining false misconceptions I held as a Christian. I held as, about God as a Christian. My questioning of the doctrines of the Trinity and Incarnation finally was laid to rest thanks to the Quran. The Quran helped me understand the Bible and Judeo-Christianity and put them in their proper perspectives. I saw Islam as the fulfillment and completion of Judaism and Christianity. In the Quran I saw the true authentic historical Jesus Christ and the authentic teachings or gospel of Jesus. I was also pleased to know that Allah was actually the same God that I had been worshipping my whole life, the Father. Now at this point I was still not ready to embrace Islam. There were more unanswered questions. One big question was, is the Quran the 100% pure word of God? I had already concluded that the Bible was a mixture of words of God and man. So I was skeptical about the Quran. However, I discovered the Quran's amazing accuracy on scientific statements in the fields of embryology, geology, astronomy, physics, etc. This led me to logically and rationally conclude that the Quran must be God's word because Muhammad was illiterate. But the Quran is accurate in statements which were only scientifically discovered in modern times. I was also thrilled to know the Quran today is the same as that revealed by God to Muhammad, but the original Bible simply doesn't exist. My next area of study was about the person of Prophet Muhammad. As a Christian, I thought of him as a man who spread his faith with the sword. But when I read his biography, I realized 
how much I had been programmed by Western prejudice. In the biography, I saw many examples of the righteousness, charity, and mercy of this great man of God. Even in times of conflict, he was superior in, in morals and faith. When he had the upper hand and was in a position of power, he often showed much mercy, leniency, and forgiveness to his enemies whenever possible. When I read about him, I cry, because I am proud of the sacrifices he made to God, Allah. I started to love Allah and his Prophet Muhammad. Now I seriously started considering Islam as my way of life. I was a believer without a religion. I had no guide to live by. When watching Muslims on TV prostrating their heads to the ground, I thought to myself, in terms of worship, that is the ultimate physical expression of humility to God. And I wanted that to be a part of my life. I remember Jesus putting his face to the ground when praying to God in Matthew 26:39. Islam taught me that the reason why we are created is to worship God in all aspects of our lives. Islam is a complete way of life. It has a divinely inspired law that informed me of what is right and wrong, moral and immoral. I needed that dearly. In Christianity, I only had a faith, but it offered me no concrete direction in my daily interactions in society. Islam taught me how to follow in the footsteps of the prophets. It gave me a strong sense of brotherhood and sisterhood, and more importantly, God, Allah, promises the Muslim eternal salvation. But in the Bible, the word promise of salvation was never used, but I saw it many times in the Quran. This gave me a lot of inner happiness and peace. Another important feature of Islam was that it gave me the opportunity to access God directly in prayer and seek his forgiveness and have a personal relationship with him. In the Bible, Paul taught me that I must access God through a mediator, which is Jesus. Christianity did not give me direct access to God, and in order to be forgiven of sin, Christianity required me to believe that God was unjust by sending his so-called son to die for the guilty sinners. Paul also taught me that in order for me to be forgiven of sins, I, or Paul also taught me that I could not be forgiven of sins without the bloodshed of Jesus Christ on the cross. Islam removed these Christian limitations on God's forgiving power and did not demand that I believe in the injustice of the cross anymore. Islam corrected Paul on these important points and taught me that God is not limited in his forgiving power. He forgives sins without sending an innocent son to be murdered for the guilty sinners. Islam let me keep the elements of my Judeo-Christian faith that were true, so I wasn't losing anything by accepting Islam. I was only gaining the truth in its totality, and I considered myself a better follower of Jesus by becoming a Muslim. A Muslim is one who submits his or her life to God, according to the religion of submission, Islam. I found myself in full agreement with all the Islamic beliefs. I accepted the six pillars of faith, which are, number one, belief in God, number two, belief in angels, number three, belief in the original books that God revealed. Number four, belief in God's prophets and messengers. Number five, belief in the day of judgment. And number six, belief in destiny. In February 2000, for the first time I submitted my life to Allah. And I have been guided, happy, and very blessed ever since. I end this video with a quote from the Holy Quran. And it says, and I quote, Inna dina inda Allahi l-Islam Surely, the true religion in the sight of God is Islam. Praise and glory be to Allah, Almighty God, forever and ever. Amin. Peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum.